let's start the day. Good morning from our cozy, frosty outpost in Coles Bay. We're spending our final days at the off-grid cabin, preparing to close it down for the season as the colder months settle in. It's bittersweet, but we're soaking in every last moment of tranquility before we bid farewell until next time. The crisp air and peaceful surroundings are a reminder of the season that is to come. Total darkness and the beginning of our true winter here in the north. Soon the landscape will be cloaked in a thick blanket of snow and the sun will dip below the horizon, leaving us in the stillness of the polar night. We won't be able to access our off-grid cabin in the coming months because the Botox will be pulled from the water, marking the end of the boat season. Additionally, there usually isn't enough snow before January to make the trip by snowmobile. This in-between season leaves the cabin out of reach, which is why we need to prepare it to stand empty and alone for a little while. The biggest concern is polar bears, so we have to take extra precautions. It's a bit of a process securing the cabin against the elements and the wildlife, but it's necessary to ensure everything remains intact for when we return. And that's exactly what we're doing in this video, getting the cabin ready for the long winter ahead. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure to hit that button. We've got the wildest season ahead, full of incredible adventures and just regular life on an island close to the North Pole. And I would love for you to be a part of the journey. How many degrees minus is it outside? It's about two minus. Minus. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Oi, 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 green. Oh. Oh. Reset. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh, Lila, it is king in. You love it here, don't you? Of course, I have had to find a way <laughs> how to hang out my sheets here as well. And all I need is really two chairs. So this is going to be good for now. And then also, if we have these chairs here, we can actually drink our morning coffee out here. It's a good place to sit. <laughs> so I think I'm just going to place them like here or something. Because there's nothing better than getting fresh, crispy sheets. Okay, we got to go inside. It's a little bit cold. It's cold, guys. You do mean? Skal du komme? Skal du være ute? Ja, du vil være outside. How goes it? Fin kopp vil ha. Så den her også tror jeg. Everybody, it's so cozy here, Christopher. Ah, that was very warm. Very, very warm. I've started a new series because I finished Throne of Glass and everything else that I was reading. I'm reading Mistborn. So far, really enjoying it. I've already bought the first three books and I think they're in, in this series. It's six and then you can add on with a bunch of other ones, I think. Oh, so that's what I spent this morning doing so far. Do you think it's going to be your last trip to the cabin? I think probably it's going to be your last trip. Yeah, I think this is going to be my last trip here because you need to go back and take up the mooring buoy. Yeah. Mm. We hope to be able to come back as early as January, but December. I you th yeah, okay, Christopher hopes December. I don't think so. We haven't had snowmobile weather in December for quite many years. But the cabin, the other guys here who have cabins says they always go here in December. Oh, okay. But maybe they also just brave the icy... Oh, it's it's, it's going to be ice and coals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's probably not the best uh, snow conditions, but it works. Mentally, I've started the season here uh, from January. Mm, December. 
<laughs> but yeah, so we're not even in the cabin for that long, but still two months. Yeah. And even though there hasn't been a polar bear break-in for 20 years in this cabin, they walk around here all the time. Have they been to one of the other cabins? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you hear. <laughs> nah, they've been in almost every cabin there, but uh, I think this one is not so close to the shore. And the other ones are like 10 meters from the shore, so I think the polar bear roams there more easy. Like it's the natural way to go. True, yeah. Otherwise it would have to detour up here while it naturally walks by then there. Then we probably. have to have some food that it smells. Mm. Then we have to have some bacon. <laughs> but it's so nice to be here now that it's kind of crispy outside. I love it even more. There's just something about winter cabin life. Mm. You know, it's cold, but it's crispy and it's fresh and it's... I don't know, I love it. So now we're just gonna drink up our coffee. We already had breakfast. I had dry tech. <laughs> Because I like it. And Christopher had some cracker bread. Very easy one. Okay, this cabin, we don't have any electricity, so we're gonna put up string lights. That's an easy way to get some light in the roof. So, and we only have like 12 volt batteries so far. So I'm gonna put up this in the roof and then we get some more light in the evenings. And it doesn't take any a few watts of this so we can snow stress for the batteries so i'm gonna start with it now christopher is gonna put these up the same way we do at home which is just with teeny tiny nails that you just kind of space out and then you wrap the cord around it because it is copper wire string lights so it's super easy to just use these uh, so I think it's gonna help get us a lot of light in here just now that we don't have any way to get any other lights like we can't just plug in a lamp you know we can't bring really any battery powered lamps either because you know it, it will not have enough battery so this is a super smart way for us to get light very fast in here and then when we do the whole remodel and everything or when we you know switch out all the furniture we're gonna look at some different solutions for light but i think this could be you know the perfect cozy way it's gonna look like it does at home but i don't mind that you know i think like we said oh it's gonna give us so much light okay down here or down here uh, down. Under. Mm. when it comes to how far you need to space them out we usually do wait a end of Maybe one nail every like three meters or something. You can see, you know what, watch Christopher and see what he does. We're gonna, we're gonna find out. I'm gonna put this one over here. I realized that I forgot to show you that we put up some string lights on our last trip in the cabin for easy mood lighting. Since there's no electricity out here, it's the perfect way to add a cozy atmosphere when the nights get long and dark. Simple, but it makes all the difference. I get so many questions about how we install the string lights, so I thought I would show you. It really is super easy. All you need is a set of copper wire string lights. There are plenty of options available and they don't have to be expensive. Amazon has some great ones, I know. Just make sure you choose warm white lights for that perfect cozy vibe. Then all you need is a few nails and a hammer and you're good to go. The trick to getting the lights to look flawless and straight is to wrap the copper wire around each nail. This gives you better control and keeps the lights in place, creating that clean, seamless look. It's a simple detail, but it really makes a difference in how polished the setup looks. It adds a lot of light, which is exactly what we need right now, because we don't have any indoor lighting at all. What we have up here is an emergency lantern that we've hung up here. I don't know what it is because I was like, I don't want to make this cabin the same as our cabin. I want it to look different. So now I feel like we're doing the same. But this is an element that we really do like in our cabin. So maybe I should just be like, we can keep some things. But the rest we're going to do different because I know we're going to do a lot of different colors in here. It's going to be greens and grayish and maybe blues and a lot of color. So it's going to be definitely different. But this, I mean, it is such a vibe. And again, it's such a good way to get some light when we don't have any electricity. This is gonna smell so good. Oh, it's snowing on the other side. Hello, 
Gulisen. Hej! Hallå! Vad är glad idag? Åh, du är så fin i pälsen! Vilken färg! Vilken färg du har! Oj, you're so orange! Oj, oh, you're so orange! Killer då? Oh. Tvångskot! Mm. Hallå! Hallå! We got Starlink. So much quicker than we thought. We ordered it maybe two, three weeks ago and then it came. It perfect in timing for a trip before this when Christopher was here. So... This, you know, I've never had anything like this before, but it's been so easy. So there's a couple of different versions. We just got this one, which I think is Rome. Starting Rome. I don't know. So let's uh, put it out and we'll talk more about it. Hey, what is it? <laughs> oh, yo, yo, yo. Are you gonna go in for the kiss? I don't want to. Oh. Then I'm gonna do attack hugs. Oh, do the bra. So, all that Starlink requires is a subscription, and the one we're using is 90 bucks a month, I think $8.99. Uh, and you can pause it anytime you want. So we're gonna pause it during the polar night when we don't use it. I love services that allow you to do that. I hate when they just force you to pay for a year and you don't use it. So you need a subscription and then you need an open clear sky, which we have a lot of here. Um, and then the power, which we will be using the generator for. The upload speeds are quite slow, but the download speeds are pretty good because I think most people use them for, you know, watching something versus uploading something. So for me, if I would want to upload a YouTube video, for example, if I would upload a 20 minute video at home, it would take me four minutes. <laughs> uh, if I would upload it on this, it would take me four hours. <laughs> so that's a little bit of, you know, a comparison. But uploading to, you know, Instagram or something like that is pretty much as fast as it is at home. So it's more, you know, you have to be, you have to plan ahead if it's going to be a bigger thing that I'm uploading. But generally, we're just going to use this to be able to, you know, check in on emails and maybe look at the weather and stuff like that. Especially also since we have the generator that's running, we're not going to have it on at all times. Later, when we get an inverter, we might have it on at all times. I don't know what's easier to be honest. But yeah, so I also realized that coverage is different from for where you are in the world. I don't think the coverage for this is that good in America, if I'm understood, or in the United States. But here on Svalbard, superb. <laughs> we have this works incredibly well up here. That's good. I think it's because we have so many satellites here that it can ping to. If those are the right terms. Oi, oi, oi. We have a pink sky coming on. Whoa. So yeah, I'm gonna leave this out here. Do you know what's cool? If it snows on it, it heats it to remove the snow. And it wasn't even that expensive. That was also really surprising. This package cost, I think, 400 bucks. And I think it was a lot more expensive the first round. This is the second version. So I thought, like, considering what you get and that it's, you know, remote access to the internet, I thought that was pretty cheap. Anyway, let's go. We forgot to order the thing that you mount a mount to put it on the house. So we have a we, we just put it on the ground now, and it works fine. But we're gonna mount it on the house later and pull in the cable in the house and make everything like a proper installation. We haven't bought an inverter yet to get uh, the stalling to work on uh, 220 vol uh, volt. So for now, 
we're going on uh, the uh, aggregate generator. The generator. So we're just driving the stalling through the generator, and this is a this is a really small one, so it's real fuel fuel efficient. So it doesn't take. How many any... liters per hour? Oh, it's not liters; it's deciliter. Oh yeah, it's, one liter of petrol. I think like uh, two liters in eight hours or something. When you go on the on the turtle mode, <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't take that much. This little shed is called Tusapu, and that is because this little dog here is Tusa, and that is a dog that they were watching all the time. So it, it was almost like their dog, but she was apparently enough of you know uh, of a. Uh, household member that she has had a shed named after her. The boat is also named after her. The boat is called Pular Tusa. I think that's so funny. When he told me all about this, I was envisioning like, you know, a husky or something. Let me show you how small this dog Tusa is. What well, was, rest in peace, little girl. That's her. <laughs> that's Tusa. Look at this. <laughs> I just love it how much they loved her. She made an impression. We got to keep the names going, but we're changing the name of the main cabin. Yeah. This is going to be a name reveal of the big cabin. So before it was called uh, Heidi Boo, because her name was uh, Heidi or Heidi. We think we're going to name it Grimbu. Grimbu! <laughs> because we already have Tusabu, and also I just feel like it's a vibe. It's actually quite hard to find a name for cabin. Mm. Our cabin is called Villa Vestem, which is a word play on Wild West and also the villa on the west. Our cabin was actually originally named Casa Burialis, but the previous owner had renamed it to Villa Vesten. So when we bought it, we absolutely loved the name and asked if we could keep it, and she happily agreed. So now our cabin carries on as Villa Vesten. Incredible name. Absolutely witty and beautiful. Yeah. But here we couldn't call it, you know, we couldn't call it Villa East because it's also West. <laughs> so like... We had nothing we could really do with that. So we said, why should we not just make it Grimm's? So, so far, and until we think of anything else, I think it's Grimbu. Yeah. And Bu means like Swedish bo, meaning live, right? Like where you live. Yeah, but it's going to be like a bu, also like this as well. Oh, th this is a bu for... Yeah, like a living place. Isn't that what the word no, is? No, bu is more like this, like a wood, like a bod. Is it? So that was the uh, name reveal. We're going to get a whole sign and everything and yeah, cool beans. Okay, now we should go back to take this one. doing what we're doing. So as you can see on the Wi-Fi soon, it was just here. Uh, it will connect to what we of course named Grimlink. It's gonna sound crazy with all this grim stuff, but why not? We all love him. Where did it go? I think we need a little bit. We must go and get a little tent wheel, I think. Do you know? Get the bar. This is the only thing that's gonna heat the cabin in winter, so usually you do have to kind of have one person that goes and fills feeds the fire in the middle of the night otherwise it gets cold very fast and i mean tonight it was only minus five outside and it got cold enough that i could feel it in bed in the middle of the night then imagine when it's minus 30 outside you really do not want the fire to ever kind of go out then it would be very cold very cold this is a very good fireplace though isn't it yeah. It's it just keeps the fire or it starts a fire super quickly. Is it because it's so big and has so much air? It must be. And yeah. the pipe is quite high as well. Okay, and the pipe is quite high, which makes it even a bit better.
Welcome to Kaplaila's um, chef's table. Today we're going to make some pork chops, some rice, some Brussels sprouts, and some sauce. Very easy cabin food. We only have like like this, like two that you can fry in or boil in, so you don't get all the lux luxury up here. So I make it quite easy. <clears throat> Some frozen uh, Brussels sprouts. And we have rice, boiling bag. The pork chops I just salt up. Garlic pepper, the light is absolutely incredible. Look at how like pink it is. The sky has been the sky has been super colorful. Oh, it almost looks like you know February. But October all often has the same kind of cutters like pastel winter has. Oh, which is one of the reasons why I think October is so beautiful. I hope, I hope we get some northern nights tonight. It looks like the sky is clear. And I check the forecast and it says that if it's clear, there should be some. But you know, with northern nights, there is no should. It's just kind of like, hope for the best. <laughs> now I'm going to take some photos of the cabin with this view. The magic kitchen timer. The rice takes 15 minutes. So let's stop. Some more herbs. We haven't bought any herbs or anything. This is just leftovers from uh, uh, the Torsten and Heidi left here. So we're using everything yeah, that they left. I mean, we'll probably buy some more stuff for the snowballs, snowmobiles even. Then it's easy to get up with all the things here. Where have you left me? Where did you go? He's so funny. Every time we go on a walk, it's like me, I'm on my own walking and he is <laughs> um, very far away. Let's just say that. He's running on a different side of the island. It's too funny. Most of the time when I go on, on the cabin trips like this, especially in the summertime or autumn, then I, I always bring like I vacuum everything home and then I freeze this most of the meat and we try to have like frozen vegetables because it's kind of easy and then I put everything in a, in a bag, a cooling bag. <clears throat> so then we have like frozen food for at least like uh, three days and then it will be a fridge for one or two days. So it means like you can have food there for at least one week or like six seven days easy and it's still fresh <clears throat> and that's kind of smart so to have smart thing use a scissor to cut the, the pork to get it flat works like a charm
とこしょうか。焦るのは。えっと、人生に。I have to go to the bathroom, and it's as you can see, the dark nights are back. Ooh, I feel like I'm a ghost. I was hoping maybe we could see some northern lights today, but it's cloud covered, so we cannot see really anything. I can see almost some stars through this. I didn't bring my rifle with me. I think I definitely should do that next time because now that it's dark, I can't really see anything, you know? Like, where did Grim go? Oh, is that you over there? Oh my god, this is fucking terrifying. I did it, Grim. Oh, everything feels like a scary movie. I've got a backup light. Grimbo! There he is. <laughs> see? See, this is maybe slightly more. <laughs> appropriate than this but this is vibey <laughs> this is like first you check and then you go boom who's that oh jesus christ you scared me oh no this is too scary for a little boy and girl like me and you Instead of northern lights, we got some fresh snow. I feel like there's quite a lot coming down as well. It is so dark out here. <laughs> always in the beginning of winter and towards polar, polar night, I always feel like it's a little bit scary in the beginning before I get used to the darkness again, because we have not had darkness for a very long time. But then, you know, you kind of get over your little fears <laughs> and you become one with the darkness. Oh, wow. It is so peaceful. It's also such a wild feeling to know that you're in the middle of nowhere and there's not a single soul around, you know? It's just us here. And that, for some reason, I don't find scary. Hey, Kingen. Come on, go set. Come. Hello. Yeah. Oh, hey. Come on, 
länge har du varit ute? Hur länge har du varit ute? Nu är det typ tre minuter. Tre minuter. Oj, jäklar. Det var blött från snön. You sleep well. Har du sovit gott, Kristoffer? Mm. Oh, you sleep so well in cabins like these. It's so quiet and the sound of the fire. What? Oh. So many winter vibes. Hey. Och ser du någon där borta? Renbjörnarna. De var fina va? Se. Det är någon där borta. Machu. Vad är renbjörnarna? Oh, there's more. There's five of them. There's five reindeer over there, which is always exciting because they're so cute. And they're just eating and chilling. Mm -hmm. Yes, today is a little bit, like Christopher said, there's a sour wind outside. <laughs> that is correct. It's crispy and cold. I'm gonna go inside. Get him, skinny man. I'm gonna go check how much water we have. All the canisters who are standing like this upwards is uh, dishwash water and then normally we have lid who are standing like this it's pointing towards town that's drinking water who, what, what we've been dr taking from uh, from town but now we are empty we still have like 10 10 liters of drinking water so it's, uh, it's the last trip, so it's kind of fine. But for last year, we need much more drinking water because we used we used like everything in uh, we had in one month, and we're gonna stay here for longer next year. So that's good to know. But definitely, this will last the whole winter for 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 washing up everything. And then I will take home two of these and in December when I probably will get back I will start bringing out some drinking water. So we probably take drinking water every time we go out to take 125 or 250 liters or something. But that's only in the winter. In May I will probably drive out like 400 liters or something with the fresh water from town. We will check out water filter if that will work. If we have to boil water anyway then we don't gonna use it. I then will be too much hassle then it's easier to just bring water but if the filter working as it is then we will buy a filter. This September I've been here almost the whole time. I've been home a couple of days and on and off uh, just fixing some stuff and just check everything, how it works and learn the place. Uh, last weekend I went out with a couple of friends and uh, we cut a lot of wood. Not a lot, but at least for one year or something. When you have driftwood uh, as easy as we have here in uh, Kaplaila, you want to cut your own wood because it's kind of fun to to make it yourself. So our main like preparing for winter is uh, cutting wood of course. So this wood that we cut this year we probably can use next winter and uh, 
That's super fun to this is the first time I I'm up here that I actually cut my own wood because we have so easy like on the shore here is so much of drift uh, lumber so that's excellent to do and uh, we already had all the things here Torsten had uh, like you we you chainsaw and cutting wood and for everything that splits everything so it was like just start easy I just brought some uh, chainsaw oil because that I it was one liter but I used it so I bought a couple of more liters and now we have a lot of wood even more here so we cut this uh, di this as well last week uh, why we don't burn uh, driftwood home is because it's rather it's so much it, it can be so much salt water in it so then we have to change the pipe home more often and to to cut it here and take home will be time as you as a, that wouldn't work that good and I don't want to have salt in that uh, log burner that we have home here it's a small log burner who is easy to just take out a new one you can have it for probably 15 16 17 20 years and then change it so that's all right if you have free wood all the time and easy access this is uh, that Torsten have been cutting you see the color on this one is not the same as the fresh cut so this part we did last week and uh, we just developed from here and this is the old you can see it's get more dark color as wood become after years laying around so sjukt det blir kallt oj så vackert kallt idag oh today it's cold like there's it's just a a wet cold it feels like today it definitely isn't but i think it's the wind the wind is icy <laughs> Oh, and also we're out in our pajamas. <laughs> but the color and the sun coming in. Since we're gonna leave all of the textiles and everything, we're just gonna make sure to leave it very airy. So that there's, you know, no chance of something becoming stuffy. As soon as we get the, the bracket for the stalling, we're gonna put it on the roof here. And then it's gonna be there year out, year in. It can be outside in all, all weather up here. That's really good that it, you don't have to take it in every time. Now we're gonna take it inside the cabin and leave it there till we come next time. And hopefully that time we have a bracket. This is the spare bedroom like we don't use it so we have we can have this window open and I just put a pillow before it so it doesn't get cold in the cabin when we have it here because the door is even closed so as long as you don't have the bracket we have to do this good night I uh, saw so some people asked about solar panel if you can have that. We have some solar panel, I think 200 watt. So it's not much, but at least we can start with it. And we have batteries here. It's old batteries, but they work for the moment. We will have to see if they work with the Starlink. The Starlink uses quite a lot between like 50 or 150 watt. So we're going to see how long we can use it for before we buy something new until this we use the generator the inverter when you close the cabin it's important i i, I filled up five minutes ago uh, gasoline in here so it's uh, full uh, the other generator that we have is full with gasoline you just organize everything like just fill up everything and uh, lock the doors and close the windows uh, everything you have to you have to fix everything before you go like uh, like for example this I have to put a lit lid on uh, 
the generator outside because you have this exhaust. We're gonna put that one on and we have to close the battery bank. So that is closed now. I put the lid on and then we are ready in here actually. This is for, for snow so we don't get snow inside. Tosabu is ready for lockdown for winter. I emptied all the food except like uh, cracker bread. That's about and some uh, muesli. That's it. Everything else is emptied. The polar bear isn't supposed to eat anything, to smell it. Steady. Turn off the propane. I empty the ash in the wood stove. There, here's uh, still some drinking water and here's some washing water. So I just let the lid be open but on. So when it freezes, it doesn't like expand and uh, start to leak. So then we have at least some when we come back. We are now ready to say goodbye to this cabin for a few months. The water has been emptied in here and organized. The food has been also emptied. Uh, Starlink is inside. Everything that you've done in Bodana. I think all, everything is done. It looks great. I've packed my bag, so I'm ready. Oh, the next time we're coming out, we're probably gonna be bringing all of the furniture with us. Maybe, depends on when. It's There's so many maybes when it comes to the weather here. But one of the times that we return is gonna be furniture time. Let's pack up, let's go. It's happening. Fine. These lofts is just the extra, extra security stuff. Safety, as always up here. Safety for something. <laughs> And just like that, our first month at our new off-grid cabin comes to an end. We can't wait to return as soon as the weather allows and experience our first real winter here on Kaplaila. For now, we're heading back to our cabin outside Longyearbyen, where we'll eagerly await the arrival of the polar night and all the cozy moments it brings. Thank you so much for watching and for being a part of our Svalbard adventures. Don't forget to subscribe to join the fam and get notified when I post. I will see you next week. Okay, bye!